What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today I wanna to show you my strategy to making 100K in the next six months. And as you can see then in the brackets, it says mini course, just because when I was putting this video together, there was literally so much information to cover. It kind of is like a mini course in itself. So we're literally gonna be covering absolutely everything then. So from startup costs to how to name your store, store logo, what kind of products, what kind of niches, and then finally finishing off the video with a Facebook ad strategy. So as there is so much to cover then without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. So first things first then is the startup costs. It isn't free to use Shopify as a platform. So there are a few unavoidable costs, namely the plan itself. So you will get a free 14 day trial when you sign up. But obviously then at the end of that, or when you want to make your first sale, you will be forced into a plan. So I recommend just going for the basic plan. It's more than adequate. Um, and you're gonna pay $29 until you get to about, I think it's about 12 grand a month in revenue, then it only makes sense to go up to the next plan because then you pay less per transaction. And because you'll have so many transactions going through, then you actually save the cost of what a more advanced plan will make, if that makes sense. But anyway, to begin with, just don't worry about that. Go for the basic one. Just a quick note then guys, because I forgot to mention it in the intro, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one call as I do on every single video. If you want to enter the draw then to win that call, all you have to do is like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on my previous video, then just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one and um, where the win will be announced. And that means the thing, guys, let's get straight back into the strategy. Apps wise, then there's a few that I recommend just to make the most of your store, just to optimize it and encourage people to spend as much money as possible. So you're looking at $50 a month approximately, um, namely then the upsell app. We need the Oblo app. This is a must have. We need the Horrify app as well. Now, just a quick note on that, depending on what kind of store you're going for, then sometimes I don't recommend it. But one thing I will say is that if you're gonna use countdown timers, just make sure they're legit. Make sure you've got a legitimate countdown timer that goes from A to B and then ends at B because there's nothing worse than people coming back to the same product page and seeing the same amount of items in stock or seeing the same amount of time left on the timer. It's just gonna put people off. We're trying to build a real genuine and professional business here. Next then we want a free shipping bar. We want that because it's just great advertising on your store to advertise whether it is free shipping, a certain sale you're running, um, whatever it is. And then we need a review app as well. Again, this is a must just because the more reviews a product has, the more social proof it has, and the more likely somebody is to buy it. So my recommendation then is the Lux Photo reviews of all the different apps I've looked at, then just the layout and just everything about it just looks pretty good. So that's my recommendation. But again, it's entirely up to you. And then we need a domain as well. Um, like I said, we're trying to build something professional here. So we want a professional domain, our own name, and then um, a .com or .co.uk, which we'll be talking about later on in the video. So there your startup costs then. Moving on to the niche itself, which is a very important pit. Um, so basically we're trying to make the most and capitalize over the summer months. The weather is getting better. So this is what we want to gear our niche around. So it needs to be trending and it needs to be a trend that you that is either at the very beginning or just before. The last thing we want to do is invest all this time and money into a trend that is on its way out. We want to catch it at the right time to capitalize on it and make as much money as possible. So things to think about then, think about how behaviors are changing due to the weather slash the time of year. So depending on what country you're in or what country you're advertising to, think about what time of year it is. Think about what the weather is doing. Is it getting warmer? Is it getting colder? Certainly here in the summer it is obviously getting warmer. So think about the kind of things that people start to change in their behavior. So for example, then what do people spend money on? Like they start traveling more, they start doing their hobbies if they're outdoors or they start playing more sports, etc. Where do they go? Um, people start going to beaches, to parks, to festivals, start to spend basically just more time outdoors. We're gonna be showing you some niches as well um, in a second. And then think about what are the kind of popular hobbies that are coming into fashion this time of year. So do more and more people get on their bike and go cycling now, more and more people going for picnics in the park or on the beach because the weather's getting better. And then to basically just double check that you're getting into a trend at the right time um, always use Google Trends. Google Trends is a huge tool. If you haven't used it yet, then make sure you get familiar with it. So as promised then, I'm just gonna be showing some niches to you guys just to kind of give you ideas. I always like to provide ideas in my videos because sometimes it can be very difficult actually choosing ones. Um, so nearest beaches then, so as you can see, if we just take a look at when kind of like the peaks start to happen, we can see in like April time-ish, 
um, it's on an upward trend so now would be a very good time to go into the beach niche so think about the kind of things people do at the beach at the beach then what kind of sports they play what hobbies um, do they take food and eat picnics and things like that obviously they go in the sea so certain water sports maybe the next one being then the park as you can see there's also spikes um, peaks and troughs is that's the right kind of term and you can see it kind of peaks in August which is obviously the summer months in the UK um, so obviously more and more people then are going to the park so again think of the kind of things they do at the park picnics there you go you can see that as the weather gets warmer more and more people go for picnics so what do people spend money on when they go for a picnic or where are they having that picnic and so on so it's all about just trying to get into thinking about what people will think essentially and what they do what their behaviors are um, and then obviously just use Google Trends just to confirm that. So golf, um, I love golf and I certainly would class myself as a summer golfer. If it's raining, then I won't even bother getting my clubs out. So obviously during the summer months, there's going to be more people playing golf like me. Um, again, beach holidays. So people actually look for certain types of holidays, obviously with the summer months, especially with it coming up to... Um, like the kids holidays they have the summer break of six weeks a lot of people go on holiday a lot more people travel so what kind of things are they spending their money on when they're traveling moving on to the last few then garden furniture obviously more and more people are going to be spending time in their garden as you can see kind of around april time in fact april's the peak which is actually quite surprising um in fact june july in that year so i guess it depends on when it starts to get warm in the uk the uk can be pretty unpredictable so obviously just make sure you check um, Google Trends. So garden furniture, more and more people spending time in their garden. So again, what are the kind of things people do in their garden? People go to music festivals, obviously, as the as the weather starts to get better, as you can see in June, if we look at some of the recent years, um, June again. Um, so perhaps there's a big festival in June. And again, what kind of things do people do at festivals? Like they're obviously camping. So think about tents or so kind of like camping accessories etc which actually brings me on to my last one which is camping itself and again you can see there's some clear spikes in the popularity so once you've picked a niche then and you've double checked it on google trends the next thing you're going to need is a store name so shopify actually have their own name generator which i'm going to demonstrate now but before we do then a couple of things to keep in mind so the domain i recommend if you're just going to stick to the uk only go for .co.uk but if you think you might scale out into other countries or you definitely will do from the beginning, then I would just use .com because .com is kind of more universally accepted, um, whether you're selling in Europe or in the US, obviously. And then name wise, make sure the name is relevant to the time of year so the customer knows what to expect. So here's a just a couple of quick examples that I come up with. I don't know whether they're available. If they are, then feel free to go and use these ones. But summer vibes for all. So again, it tells you exactly what you're all about in the name. So people know what to expect without having to actually physically go on your store. And then summerpicks.co.uk. I imagine that one's probably already taken. So just to demonstrate then how the name generator works, if you just Google Shopify and business name generator, you'll find it. And you just put in your keywords here, click generate names. And then as you can see, it gives you 100 examples of different names and just simply go for one that you like the sound of. So once you've come up with a name then that you're happy with, next thing you need is a logo. Now, depending on what niche you're in, so completely avoiding this video topic, depending on what kind of niche you're in then, Sometimes I don't even recommend having a logo. Like I've got stores now that don't even have a logo. Sometimes the name is just enough, but because we're going into a niche which is quite bright, quite casual and quite visual, then I recommend having a logo that matches that. So I get all my logos from Fiverr purely because um, I don't know how to use Photoshop and I'm not very visually creative. So head over to Viva, you'll find loads of people on there. Don't pay a ref rule of thumb, then don't pay more than $10 for a logo. Um, in fact, I didn't include that in the expenses, which is bad. Um, but yeah, so don't pay anything more than $10 for a logo. And in the notes then when you when you tell them what you want, then just tell them what you're doing. So say it's for a summer store that's selling quite fun and friendly products and you want the actual logo itself then to be bright and casual because that's the kind of image and theme and feel of your store that you're trying to capture. Um, and then if you are creative and you've got the skills to do so, you can always just create one yourself. So once you've got your logo, then obviously you need a store to add it to. So you need to choose the theme. Now my two recommended themes then are debut and supply just to show you these. Um, I think I've got them open somewhere. Uh, let's go explore th free themes. So debut is this one here in the middle and then supply I believe is this one. Um, and as you can see, they're just dead simple. They are just really nice looking 
stores they're really easy to navigate and they're just optimized to try and get customers through as quick as possible and i'm going to do a video purely on this topic later on actually about whether you actually need a paid theme and if you do what i recommend but to keep things simple and to keep things free if you're on a budget then de debut or supply is absolutely fine so in terms of color schemes and design then um, a white background just keep a white background again we want to make sure that the actual overall theme and feel of this website is really bright and fun um, and also keep the product images white background as well overall then to finish off this section the idea is to match the feel of the store to the theme and time of the year so obviously if you're selling in the uk and you're creating like a summer store then summer isn't like a down and dingy time of year where people are miserable and depressed. It's a time where they're just the opposite. They're extrovert, they're outgoing and they're happy. So you want your theme to represent that because then people, it's gonna match people's themes. When people are happier and they're comfortable, then they're more willing to spend money. So just make sure that your, that your website just captures that. So once you've created your website, then you're gonna to need to pick a product. So here's just a few criteria that I recommend making sure that your product meets. So number one then, under $15 cost delivered. So that includes the delivery on AliExpress. A couple of reasons really, if you are shipping to the UK, you're gonna avoid that tax threshold so there won't be any tax to pay on the item. And then you want to sell a product that you can sell with at least a $15 margin before you take into account the Facebook cost per purchase. So if your item is bang on $15 delivered, then you wanna make sure you can sell it for at least $30. Probably because nowadays on Facebook, I find that if you can give yourself at least $15 margin, if you do a half decent job on Facebook, then you should be able to achieve cost per purchases um, for less than that. Moving on to point three then, go for fastest delivery possible. So depending on what country you choose, then so if you're selling to the EU, try and source products from the EU. If you're selling to the US, try and source products in the US as well, just because with the weather being good, people are gonna be spending a lot of time outdoors as soon as possible. So they're gonna be reminded of that product that they've ordered to use outdoors every single day and therefore the longer you keep somebody waiting the more annoyed they're going to get so just in case then you're not sure how to source products from those countries just a quick demonstration i've done a video purely on this topic um, if you want more detail but basically make sure you choose the country that you want to ship to up here at the top so you can see i'm shipping to the us you can choose a random um niche that's the word so let's just go for let's go for an outdoor one so in fact we're in home and garden anyway and then this is the box that you want to be looking at in fact let's start from the very, very beginning so go to all categories oh, it wants me to log in again go to all categories we'll choose an outdoor one which we were just on which was home and garden let's just have a look at all and then this is the box so you can see it says ship from and then because there's a lot of products in this niche we can actually choose products that are in the US and if we just go to orders just to look at the most popular ones because they tend to be the ones with free shipping as you can see open this up and we can see so free shipping to the US via USPS is only four to seven days so as you can see it's a lot quicker than the usual kind of two weeks that you would expect from China to US or China to UK so back to the notes then and on to the next point which is keep a product simple so I see so many people trying to complicate things looking for that golden nugget and while the product is very 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 important um, there are simple products out there that are effective so my personal kind of advice is stay away from anything consumable unless you're going with a very, very reputable supplier that you can trust. And also stay away from products that plug into the mains again, because they're the kind of products that require the extra certification. Um, and when you're dropshipping going through customs are more likely to get held up. So unless you've tested the product yourself two or three times in fact, and you have the required certifications sent to you from the supplier, just make sure you vet your supplier basically. Just go with something, um, just be more strict on what products you're sourcing if they are those kind of products. So next thing then, make sure Facebook hasn't banned your category. Obviously it's no point in picking a product that you're not allowed to advertise on Facebook. And a simple Google search then of Facebook advertising policies will take you to this page where it tells you all the different kind of niches or Kind of, kind of products essentially that Facebook won't allow or whether it's restricted or not. So we're on the prohibited. So these are all the things you can't sell. So you can't sell anything that's illegal um, to begin with, um, anything that discriminates people, any tobacco, drugs, etc., etc. 
and then if we go to the restricted content this is the stuff that basically you have to tread on eggshells whenever you're advertising within these kind of niches Back to the notes then, um, the second to last point. So use other sites for inspiration. If you struggle to find products, then just keep it simple with the methods you're gonna use. And there's a couple of methods that are really quick, easy to do, and they work just fine as well. So just to quickly demonstrate then how they work, if we go back to Facebook, um, we can put in here then, let's put in garden and then buy. We can go to photos. So there's not really a lot there. We can go to videos. Um, and as you can see, there's loads of different video ads. Again, there's not really a lot more. Let's try and make it a bit more specific. So let's go for, let's try garden hose. And then there you go. You can see all the different ads. You can see all the different views. And if you go for one that has lots and lots of views, um, there's not actually that many here. I think the top one is half decent. So we can have a look at this then. We can pause it and the thing that you want to look at in fact it's only got 11 comments but try and find one then with more comments because the more comments you have to read then the more the better idea you can get of whether people are actually buying it or whether they like it or not so just to have a quick browse at these ones then we have two of them pricey we'll see how they hold up to the sun so this guy actually did buy them so it shows there's kind of like a demand for the product however he didn't get it from this actual site but it still shows that people are interested in this product and buying it Moving on to the second one then, which is the niche.myshopify.com. So again, dead simple to do. If we just go for garden, in fact, garden.myshopify.com. Now I think that's gonna take us straight to the actual website. So we'll go to this, get rid of that and just search and now these are going to be all the different Shopify stores that are in the garden niche and you can just work your way through them just choose random ones to open them up and then simply just browse through the stores and look at the kind of products they're selling and then if you have the commerce inspector tool open so these guys are using the supplier theme um, you can also just go straight to the best selling see what the best selling products are within that particular niche so back to the notes then to finish off this section um, think sociable products because sociable products are the kind of products that will always work best when advertising on a social media platform and again summer is a sociable time nobody or at least not many people or at least I don't myself I don't go to the beach on my own I don't play golf on my own I won't go to the park on my own I'll always go with friends or family so think about products that people will want to share with their friends and family um, and they're always just gonna be the ones that do the best then when it comes to marketing on Facebook. So moving on to the next section then, so social media pages, make sure you have these all set up. Um, I don't think I put it in the notes in fact, but just make sure they are logoed up and the brand that you're creating is uniform throughout the pages. So use the same logo, same name, etc. So there's three mainly ones that I recommend having. Number one is your Facebook page because you need to run ads from this. Now before you start running ads, make sure you have at least five posts on your page because you wanna look more established. You won't have many likes, but if, as long as you've got some decent posts on there, then that should be enough to entice people um, into trusting who you are because you don't want somebody coming onto your page then and the last kind of announcement or post on your page is um, summerpicks.com change their logo. Nobody wants to see that. So make sure you've got some decent posts on there that are providing value to the people that go there. Don't just be constantly asking people for their money. So it could be a blog post, a blog post of top trending summer products used by celebrities this year, something that people are gonna be interested in and want to engage with, or a giveaway works quite well as well. So you can, one thing that I do when I first start selling a good way to test products in fact is have a like a grid picture of four different products label them one two three four and then ask people what's your favorite product um, for a chance to actually win it so it could be like comment the number down below of your favorite product and the winner will be announced um, in two weeks time or whatever it is just try and entice people to actually engage and comment on your posts instagram wise then this is a great place i pretty much just use it as like a product catalog for my stores so every product on my store will have its own post on Instagram and it'll be the same kind of theme or same kind of post. So if if like the majority of your images have a white background, make sure they all do. So when somebody goes onto your Instagram page, it's uniform, it's uniform and it looks, it just kind of looks the same or looks similar and um, just looks good to be honest because Instagram is all about Vis um, like images and videos, it's a visual platform. So you just want your Instagram profile to look as professional as possible. In the bio then, I've also got kind of like a 
template here. So number one, you want something that tells people what you do. And then number three is kind of like the enticements to essentially tell somebody we're a good, legit company and um, spend money with us basically. So 100% quality guarantee, free worldwide shipping, and then PayPal accepted. PayPal is really good because people see it as a safe way to check out. So if you advertise in the fact that you use PayPal, PayPal, then people will trust you more. Finally then, make sure you have a, tr a Twitter page. Um, and me personally then, I use Twitter to handle any customer service queries. Now, I only recommend using Twitter if you're gonna commit to this properly and have the notifications turned on on your phone because as it says there's good publicity, but it can also be bad publicity as well. If people are tweeting you and you're not getting back to them, that looks bad. But if people are tweeting you and you're getting back to them straight away, you're giving them good answers and you're providing good customer service, then that's really good publicity for you and your brand. So once you've got your social media pages, then feel free to move on to the marketing. And this is the time then to actually sell your products. So the strategy I'm gonna cover with you in this video then is the traffic strategy, purely because I'm talking about now and the next six months, and we wanna try and get as much traffic as possible onto our store in that time period. And there's no better way to do that than to actually run traffic campaigns because it's not gonna get as many clicks, it's not gonna get as much traffic as a WC campaign. So the way this strategy works then is you have one traffic campaign, and this is essentially gonna feed all the other campaigns and ad sets in your account. So one traffic campaign in $100 per day slash whatever you can afford. Obviously some people are gonna have different budgets, so if you've got the budget as a starting point, start with $100, and this should bring in 400 visits per day, and that's based on the 25p or 25 cents per click. And if you've got a decent ad with a decent audience and your relevant score is good, etc., then 400 visits per day should be pretty achievable, um, especially with a traffic campaign. And what this is gonna do then is give you 400 people minimum per day to retarget. So obviously you can retarget view content, which is 400, but you can also retarget anybody who engages, shares, and comments the post as well, etc. So once you've got that running then, I would let that run for perhaps a couple of days, maybe three days, just to build up those custom audiences. And then you wanna start with your WC campaign. And within this campaign then, you want all the following ad sets. So the first thing you wanna do then, and the main thing, is you wanna retarget the visitors minus the purchasers. So create custom audiences then for your visitors, create custom audiences for your purchasers. And then when you create your ad set, make sure you target the visitors and then exclude the purchasers, because there's no point advertising the same product to somebody who already has bought it. Next thing you also want to do is retarget the people who have already bought with you, um, but sell them a different product. Again, don't sell them the same product. So have a new ad, new product. Um, in a new campaign, I tend to stick one product per campaign um, and just say, make sure you tailor that ad to them as well. So thank you for buying this product or so-and-so, or we appreciate your your business, whatever it is, just make sure you tailor it, say thank you very much, here's 20% off to come back to us and show them a new product. A carousel ad works really well, by the way. Next thing you wanna do then is start experiment with lookalike audiences. Lookalike audiences then are basically just the best way of creating um, a segment of an audience or a an amount of people that are most similar to people who have already performed certain actions or done certain things. Now start off the lowest percentage, so 1%. If that works well, go to 2%. If that well works, go to 3%. But essentially it just comes down to testing as many different variations as possible. I'm not gonna go into crazy amounts of detail in this video because I've got loads of videos on my channel on lookalike audiences and retargeting and so on. Um, so as it says there, then start with the highest quality possible. So people who have viewed your video ad, if you've got a video ad for the longest time, people who have spent the longest time on your site, because the people who engage with you the most or spend the most time with you, they're the people who are most interested in you and your products. Therefore, you wanna create audiences based on those people. And then just a couple of notes then to finish off this section or the video, in fact, I think. Um, don't be scared to have a high frequency score. Um, I find that frequency scores of about four or five, maybe a tiny bit higher, um, tend to work the best in the retargeting ads because people don't always buy from you the first time they see you. It sometimes takes people two, three, four, five, six times to warm up to you, to trust you, to imprint your brand within their minds before they feel comfortable enough to buy from you. Plus, we live in a world where people just get distracted by the slightest little things. Uh, in fact, I think I read a study the other day that people have less attention span than a goldfish. So just keep that in mind when you're advertising to people that they might get distracted by a whole world of different things. So it might just be that they didn't have time to actually make a purchase that first time. So retag to people, don't be scared to have a high frequency score. 
And if you do get to the point then where people start complaining, commenting, saying, stop showing me this ad or whatever it is, then that's the time to slow, either reduce your budget so you're not showing ads as frequently or you can change up the creative. And then the final point of the video, if you're still watching guys, thank you very much, is the idea of this strategy then is to basically just in, in, keep imprinting in people's minds who you are, what you're doing, and what you're selling, and essentially the place to go for any kind of summer-related products. Because we're only basing this strategy on the course of the next few months, we basically just wanna spam people, to put it bluntly, as much as possible, so whenever they think of, I'm going for a picnic, or I'm going to the beach, or I'm going to play golf, then you're the person that sells those products. Because they've seen your ads so many times, you're gonna be the first name that comes into their head when they think of, or where do I need to get this from? And that being said, then guys, that wraps up the video. If you're still watching, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed the video, all I ask is that you leave me a like. And if you want to be entered into the draw then for the one-to-one -one call, then of course, please do leave a comment down below. And that being said, then guys, thanks for watching. And let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. So here we are then guys on the previous video, three products to sell now for the next six months. So if you're still not quite sure what product to sell or you just wanna pick one, um, a really decent one straight away, then make sure you go and check this video out. And if you do then please leave a like. As you can see, we're at 98 likes. So if we can get this video to 100 likes then that'd be absolutely awesome. So that being said then, I'm just gonna take the video URL, as you can see, head over to the comment picker. So for everybody that asks then, um, I don't pick the winners, I don't think that'd be fair. So it is 100% random. Um, and the winner then of the previous video is F Keys. So can't wait to try these out. Thank you for all this value. So thank you for your comment. Thank you for your support. Um, make sure you reach out on Instagram. That's the best place and we can get that call arranged. And for anyone then that doesn't want to keep trying and testing their luck every video and just wants to book a call straight away, get straight down to business, then there is a link to do so and it's in the video description below. So make sure you go and check that one out. And that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.